18 so far? Okay, that's uh, not a very convincing yes. Uh, how many of you are surviving 2018 so far? Uh, we're, believe, we're believing for a victorious 2018, amen? Uh, before I get into the Word of God, um, just a, a couple of things I wanted to share. And, um, um, and I also want to pray for some of us here. Um, uh, last weekend, I, I took a sh- very, a very short trip to, back to the States. I went to attend a funeral uh, last weekend. And the reason why I had to fly back, it was, uh, um, it was someone that was very, uh, that, uh, it was an older, elderly uh, man that had very much impacted my life. Um, but it wasn't until his passing away I realized how much he had impacted my life. And so I made sure I made a trip out there um, and, and just to attend the funeral. And, um, and he, the person I am today um, had a lot to do with him. And, and, but, you know, sometimes you go through life and... A lot of things happen. You meet a lot of people. You build a lot of relationship, and and some relationships don't work out. And you know, you kind of lose contact with people. And sometimes relationship falls apart. And you know, you get disappointed with people. You get offended by people. But you just kind of move on. You know what I'm saying? So we don't really take the time to uh, process and kind of go back and review. Uh, the people that have had invested in our lives and impacted our lives. And, and I really thank God for this opportunity early 2018, the first week of 2018. I just had an opportunity just kind of look back. Because a lot of times, you know, we go through life, we don't really think about what has actually happened. And there are times, uh, I don't know if this makes sense to you, but, you know, you go through life and things happen. Stuff's happen. And it's really hard to process at the moment. And a lot of things begin to make sense years, years later. But we don't actually take the time to go back and review them. Do you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of things, when you go through them, as you go through them, they don't make a whole lot of sense. And you struggle with different things. And as you come out of things, you just want to move on to the next thing. But I just really... I just, and, and the reason why I'm sharing this is I felt so blessed just after going through that process of kind of reviewing and, and what this guy has done for me. It was 20 years ago. And we haven't had much contact ever since. And I never actually got to say thank you or appreciate him. For what he had done in my life. So I was very honored and very privileged to have the opportunity to uh, not just attend the funeral, but to say a few words to his families. And they invited me just to share a few things to the families. And, and I, so I was able to say thank you, but I couldn't tell him in person. Now, I... It, it wasn't my intention to get a little sentimental here, but I just feel like in 2018, there are relationships that God wants to restore. There's relationship that God wants to help us reconcile. And, and, and the relationship that we're just so messed up that you don't even know how to reconnect. But there are relationships that you need to go back and revisit because you never actually took the time to appreciate and thank the people. As you grow up, you know, we, we, we tend to take a lot of things for granted, don't we? But I just feel like there is an anointing and there is a grace for reconciliations and reconnections. And so I just want to take the time and just to pray for some of us here. If that is you, I want, can you just quickly stand to your feet? I want to quickly pray for you. 
Because I've just been through an amazing two weeks where I just begin to just thank God. You know, I'm, I'm just, before you stand, okay, I'll, I'll let you stand a little later. But I'll, look, let me tell you something. I, on my way over from Taipei to L.A., to Los Angeles, I was like, a good four hours, I was just crying, right? I was watching a movie and crying at the same time because I'm just, I'm just so overwhelmed with his love for me and, and just overwhelmed with that heart of gratitude. So I was, I was bawling, man. And, and I was sitting in an emergency room and the flight attendant was just right in front of me the whole time. She's just watching me, crying. She's probably thinking I got dumped over Christmas holidays and on my way back. I'm just like a single broken man. You know, so I was like, oh, my God, this is really bad. I, I can't really explain to her. So I just cry, cry, cry. But it was so good. Like, it literally was so good for my soul. It was so good. I mean, I was able to show the family with the proper appreciation that never has shown and so, and I feel like God wants to do the same thing and reconnect relationships, just restore and just, out, and, and, and just supernaturally, divinely connect you to the people that you once were good friends or family members or, or, or whatever. So if that is you, can you just quickly rise to your feet and I'm just going to pray for you. I'm just going to pray for you. If you know you need this, just stand to your feet. I'm going to pray. There's a supernatural grace coming. There's a supernatural grace for reconciliation. So God is about... So I'm just going to ask all of you that are sitting, would you just stretch your hands? Uh, would you just stretch your hands towards those that are standing? And, 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 and we're just going to quickly pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for every single one of us that are standing, Lord. I pray that you would release such grace for 2018. That we're able to reconcile relationship. You're able to restore what was broken, what was lost, what was stolen. Lord, I just pray you return seven folds. And I pray for, 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 for family members. The brokenness in family, Lord. Would you restore that? And I pray that we, for those of us that never had... The time to appreciate those that who have invested into our lives, Lord, I pray. That something amazing would begin to happen relationally for them in 2018, Lord. And I thank you. And I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Would you please be seated? So, um, here's what I'm going to... I'm going to share with you... Um, about the vision for Bread Alive 2018. Now, um, now, Pastor Peter will share with you during Vision Sunday on the vision for Bread Alive International. But how many of you know Bread Alive International is not an independent church? We are part of a greater body called Bread Alive Family. Um, and, and so, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of funny because I, I also work with the Chinese side and... Um, I often hear the stories where people meet one another, uh, and they find out uh, they're both Christians, so they ask where the church, which church they go to, and one of them would say, I go to Taipei Ding Yang Town, and the other person would say, oh, I go to Bread Alive International, you should come and check out my church sometimes, as if these two are independent, like, are, are like, you know, like, two different churches, we're actually one body, amen? So if this piece of information is new for you, you're welcome, Okay. You're part of a greater body that's called the Bread of Life. And, and so I am sharing with you concerning the, uh, the vision, for tw vision for Bread of Life about, uh, uh, for 2018. So now it's very interesting. The passage of scripture that our senior pastor, Pastor O, received for this year is actually the same passage as last year. So this is very interesting. So we're going to, and which I share about um, last year as well. So I'm going to continue that. It's coming from Isaiah 54, verses 1 through 5. It says, Sing, barren woman, you who never bore a child. Burst into song, shout for joy, you who were never in labor. Because more are the children of the desolate women than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge a place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. 
for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. Let's pray. Father God, we just come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you. We thank you for this amazing 2018, Lord. And we just pray that you speak to each and every one of our hearts. Holy Spirit, would you just begin to soften our heart and minister to our soul. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this portion of scripture is, uh, um, is really key to what God is about to release and do in 2018. Now, I've shared from this portion of scripture last year, um, I, uh, I shared a sermon called Out of Boxes. We're getting out of the boxes. How many of you remember that sermon? Okay, don't raise your hand. That's okay. We get that a lot as, as preachers, you know. Um, but so I will kind of recap a little bit. I will, uh, so a bit of it will be a repeat review for you, but it's going to be good for you, all right? So this, we begin with this uh, portion of scripture talking about, uh, it starts off with talking about barrenness. It's talking about barrenness, and you're thinking about what does that have to do with us, especially if you're a male what does that have to do with me? Now, this barrenness isn't just talking about women not able to have children. This barrenness is describing a condition that the Israelites were experiencing. So barrenness could refer to an unfruitful area in your life that we're all experiencing. How many of you want breakthrough in your life? Okay, just some of us. That's okay. You're happy with where you are? God bless you. You have a heart of contentment. That's great. But, you know, most of us, we want, there are areas in our lives that we desire breakthroughs. And that, but how many of you know there are areas in your life that you work really, really hard trying to improve or change? But a lot of times you just don't see anything change. So barrenness is talking about, uh, so this, the, the condition of barrenness, is, it's, not talking, it's not talking about, you know, mothers who don't want to have children. It's talking about mothers who have tried and tried and desire and are desperate. And yet, they couldn't see what they desire come to pass. But amazingly, um, here's what God is saying as you desire for breakthroughs, here's how you actually prepare for supernatural intervention of God. It's by singing praises and worshiping God. Now, that's kind of a counterintuitive because when do you actually give thanks? When do you actually praise Him? It's when you have a breakthrough, right? When your answers uh, when your prayer are being answered, you say, God, I thank you. That was great. Thank you so much. How many of you give thanks when things are the way it is? We don't. We struggle. Most of the time, we complain. We say, God, where are you? Remember what Pastor Peter was leading us at the end of worship? We, talk, we look at the promises of God and we see the, not the faithfulness. But the failure of fulfillment in those promises. And we begin to take these promises to God, not to claim the fulfillment of the promises, but to, to, to complain to God. God, what is going on? I prayed. God, what is going on? I tried. God, what is going on? It's not happening. And God says, if you would just turn your complaint into praise. If you just turn your complaint into prayer. You will usher in the supernatural intervention of God. You will usher in the salvation of the Almighty. But it's, it's not in ways we're used to. It's actually through praise. He said, how do I praise Him when things are not going well? That's why it's called a sacrifice, a praise. When things are going well, 
Praising him is not a sacrifice. It's when things are not going well. When your heart doesn't feel like praising him, you're offering a true sacrifice of praise. Okay? So, and it continues to talk. It continue, continues to say, and, and so we, we talk about, um, it, it says about enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtain wide, do not hold back, lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. So we're talking about going outside of the boxes that we box ourselves in. That's what, we, that's what the whole sermon last year was talking about. You know, we, we always live under limitations. See that we have... We, we all live with unspoken, unseen limitations around us. There are belief systems that tells us who we are and who we are not. There are belief systems that tells us what we're capable of, what we can't do. There are belief systems that tells us what is possible and what is impossible. So oftentimes we are faced with our own limitations. And here's what God is saying. Do not hold back. See, what, what, what we usually, what tends to hold us back isn't the circumstances. It's actually our belief system. But where do the limitation beliefs, where do this belief system with such limitations come from? And here's what it says in verse 5. So this is all recap so far. So if this is new for you, you just join us, I assume. But <laughs> anyways, I love to encourage myself. Uh, verse 4, it says, Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth. And remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. So it's saying, do not be afraid. Do not be put to shame. You know, stepping out, coming out of the boxes, what is, the, what is stopping you from stepping out? It's actually fear. But it's just not any kind of fear. Because here it's talking about the, the fear. It's the fear the Bible is, is talking about is this fear for disgrace. There's fear for humiliation. Because, see... The word here for afraid and shame and disgrace and humiliated all come, they, all these Hebrew words have something in common. It's, it's an expectation, it's an, a failed expectation that resulted in a strong emotional feeling called shame. It's as if, if you have openly declared something is about to happen. And you tell, you've told everyone that something will happen, but in the end, it never came. How many of you understand how that makes a person feel? Now, what, what is God saying? See, your limitations actually comes from the feeling of shame that you have experienced Growing up. And the Bible says you will forget the, you, the shame of your youth. How do you actually forget the shame of your youth? Because that's all we remember from our youth. Like we remember the shame of our youth much better than the glory of our youth. Like is there a glory in our youth? <laughs> Like we tend to remem remember the shameful events that have taken place. Now, I want to explain to you why those shameful events have resulted in our becoming our boxes or limitations. See, when you go through so when you go through an experience that have resulted in deep shame, you're going to do everything you can to avoid feeling like that again so if you try something and you fail miserably guess what 
You're going to avoid that for the rest of your life. To avoid feeling like that. And that's why you begin to box yourself in. See, you're actually boxed in because of shame. Shame begins to tell you what you're capable of, what you can or cannot do. It's our avoidance of shame that boxed us in. Now, verse 5 says something, uh, at the end of verse 4 and 5 says something quite (laughs) interesting. It says, you will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. Now, it's talking about remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Because it says, (laughs) for your maker is your husband. Now, are you a widow? Or do you have a husband? Because if you have a husband, then you're not a widow. Am I making any sense? Like, these two sentences are oxymoron. Like, you either have or you don't have. Now, God is saying you do have husband, but you ex- what happened when you have that reproach of widowhood? What does that mean? Okay, I'm, trying to, I'm going to try to explain something to you very quickly before I get into 2018. So we're still on 2017, right? Okay, it, but it's, it's key, okay? Now, this is how our memory works. Here's how we remember things. We don't actually remember actual facts of an ev- event. We, here's how we remember. We tend to remember emotions. As we go through life, we remember emotions. And we base off that emotion, we piece all the related facts around that emotion. As you go through life, as you grow up, you know, stuff happened in school, you know, stuff happened at home, but it's our feeling that we first locked in in our memory and based off that emotion we begin to interpret everything that goes around that does that make sense so i was deeply wounded or hurt through an event but i don't actually know if the person was intentional or not but the result is i was hurt so here's how i'm going to remember what had happened Because what's real out of this whole thing is my emotion. I was humiliated. I was, I felt so ashamed. So here's how I'm going to remember what had taken place. But the actual event, the facts are just according to my emotion. Here's what God is saying. The reproach of your widowhood. See, the whole widowhood is your emotion. You feel like God had left you. You feel like God had deserted you. You feel like you're all alone. You feel so lonely. You feel like no one understood you. Again, here's what God is saying. That's how you feel. And he said, God, you don't love me anymore. But God is saying, hey, let me remove shame and take a look again. And when shame is removed from your life, what you're going to see is that God is your maker and he is your husband. And he has never left you. He's always with you. It's just you couldn't see it. And so when that shame is removed, finally you realize I'm not what that shame says I am. I'm not defined by that feeling of shame. Because that feeling of shame is stopping me from becoming who I am. And so we step out. So we break out of the box. We become truly who God has called us to be. 
and a recap. So, last year, the theme of last year is focusing on the second verse. Enlarge the place of your tent. Stretch your tent curtain wide. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen your stakes. So the vision for last year for Bread of Life Church is called the year of lengthening and strengthening. in Chinese. And we begin to feel the lengthening work of God in our ministry as a whole. We also begin to feel the strengthening of God for our ministry internally. Back when I shared this message a year ago, we didn't even have FX campus. We just had one campus here in Omni. But because of the need of the people, God began to first stretch our heart, begin to stretch our thinking, and God began to stretch our finances. We begin to have a heart to build another campus, a campus that is more suitable for families, a campus that's more suitable for children. And in October, we dedicated a new campus. We got about 130 people that are meeting there every week. We got about 40 children that are attending the Sunday school there every week. And the strengthening part for Bali is that we begin to have all these equipping courses that Jaira was making announcement about. Because we want to be discipled by the word of God. We want to grow in, internally. We desire to know God more. But 2018, I just love it that we're still stuck in the same scripture. But the focus is going down one verse. It's verse three. It says, for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dispose dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. So this is your year of, I'm going to say in Chinese first, it's 左右开展, 世代传承, based on verse 3. So it's, it's a year of spreading out, expanding to the left and to the right. And it's a year of receiving inheritance and also passing on inheritance it's a year of building legacy it's also a total transformation of the society of the culture of the nation so I'm gonna go through each and every one of them and explain to you what is ahead now in verse 3 it says for you will spread out to the right and to the left so hence we, in Chinese, we call it 左右开展, which is a little, uh, uh, a little scripture of, of, of verse 3. Now, it's kind of hard to explain in English, but in Chinese, last year was 扩张, 今年叫做左右开展. And often people ask the question, what's the difference between the two? Lengthening, and now we're expanding. So then we just expand with FX. What is happening? with a spreading out part. Now, I asked the same question. <laughs> it's a great question. And, and so I wanna kinda explain to you, you know, um, it's as if 2017, God begins to do something in your life. You begin to experience some area of breakthrough in your life. It's as if we're building a prototype, we're building a strategy for expansion, but we're in a strategy or trying out phase. But in 2018, you can expect an accelerated speed of it multiplying in all areas of your life. Some small breakthrough that took place in your life in 2017 is going to result in an accelerated speed of the move of God upon your life. It's going to spread in areas you're going to experience breakthrough in greater measure than you ever experience. It's as if you're, we go from building a prototype in 2017 to 2018 mass production. You know the difference between prototype and mass production. It's when something is working 
And believe me, God has already started the work in your life in 2017. Whether you're aware or not, he already started the work and he will be faithful to bring it to completion. And you're going to begin to see that multiply in 2018. Like, you're not excited. Right? So... Like, uh, let, me give you, let me give you an example. How many of you heard my testimony of, um, of how I won 32 round-trip business class tickets? Remember? Remember that story? How many of you remember that story? Like, that's an amazing testimony, right? I had a dream. I had a thought of bringing pastors and their wives and their families on a holiday. And God, supernaturally... Messed up the system, and I won. <laughs> I won a whole business cabin. Not just any business cab- cabin, but the brand new business cabin, the flatbed one, you know, just 32 business class tickets. So last March, we brought 30, over 32 pastors and their wives, different pastors, the senior leaders of the land, and also the emerging young leaders. We had the two generation coming together, like a unity kind of a trip, where we just had a lot of fun. We were in Singapore, Sentosa Island, the Meridian Hotels, for four days, three nights, all expenses paid for. How many of you know that's an awesome testimony, right? So we came back. It was great. I said, God, you did a great and marvelous things. So that was cool. And I thought that was the end of it. But there's a continuation, and that's what I'm telling you. There is a continuation of that, what got started in 2017. And the continuation is this. After I came back, after the wonderful testimony was shared all across the country, I got a phone call from a businessman, a Christian businessman. And he said, Pastor Jonathan, I heard about wonderful testimony, how you brought over 32 pastors and their wives to Singapore. I said, it's really, really wonderful. All glory to God. He said, it's too awesome to stop here. I said, what do you, what do you mean? He said, we have to do it again next year. I said, what do you mean? I don't see another contest in sight. I can register online. Because believe me, I do register for a lot of things now. You know? I'm like, just like, yeah, you never know. You never know. God does mysterious things. So I said, you know, what do you mean? He said, what God has started, we must continue. He said, tell you what, do this again next year, which is 2018. He said, do it again in 2018. I said, I would love to, but... He said, I will underwrite all expenses. In fact, he said, you know, this is so good. I don't want, I don't want you to just bring 32 pastors and their wives. I want you to also include the Presbyterian leaders from the Presbyterian denominations, the Taiwanese pastors, the Taiwanese-speaking pastors. I also want you to invite, there's a very prominent denomination in Taiwan. It's called Zhao Hui. He said, I also want you to invite the leaders from Zhao Hui to come along. He said, I want you to bring 50 people. I said, where are we going? <laughs> and he said, I just came back from a trip to Japan. It was a trip that was organized by my bank. They, they offer these kind of trips to their top clients. They organize everything. He said, Pastor John, I'll tell you what. I'm going to ask the same travel agency to plan the exact type of trip for these senior pastors and leaders. Why? Because they deserve to be honored. And I say amen to that. Let me tell you something. There is a good continuation of what God started in 2017 in your life, in your family, in your small groups, in our ministries, in our church, in our city, in our nation. And it's going to be bigger. It's going to be grander. And it's happening faster.
there's more stretching coming ahead. There's more expanding coming ahead. But you got to get your heart ready for this. You got to start anticipating. Because if, if you were faithful in stepping out last year, you're going to see a greater impact this year. The second thing it's talking about um, for you, your descendants will dispossess nations. I love it how the Bible calls it. Your descendants will dispossess nations. Now, we're going after nations. But I, I love what it's talking about because it's talking about the concept of building an inheritance or creating a legacy. Now, in order to properly build a legacy, I know coming from someone who's young, I, to talk about legacy, building a legacy, it's a little, little odd, but I, wanted, I want you to understand this concept from a biblical sense. Now, to build a legacy, you need to first understand that you're part of somebody else's legacy. So you didn't create a legacy. None of us created a legacy. You didn't come from your own. We all came from <laughs> somewhere. We all have a dad and a mom. You're part of a legacy. And if you don't understand that, you're going to run with an independent spirit. You're going to run with an orphan spirit. But, but if you understand you're part of a legacy, you're part of an inheritance that you didn't actually work for. So you have to be on the receiving end of an inheritance, be it natural or spiritual. And, and, and this is what I want to kind of take the time to share with you about because... Um, Because I, I, the Lord begins to speak to me back, and, and Eileen as well, to our family, back in, um, back in November and December, and really talking about this concept of inheritance. See, there are inheritance waiting to be received or claimed, be it natural or spiritual. You know, we often talk about generational curses in church. But there is another side that is stronger than generational curses. It's called generational blessings. But for generational blessings to come upon you, you have to be positioned to receive it. Now the problem is our forefathers or people in our family tree, somewhere along the way, there are blessings or inheritance that were lost because they didn't Try to claim it or catch it. But I feel like we're coming into a season where it's time for us to receive that inheritance, be it natural or spiritual. Now, I'm going to share very quickly about an inheritance that I just recently came made aware that, was made an, that had made an impact in my life. I told you I went to attend this uh, elderly man's uh, funeral. Um, well, he basically passed away due to a heart attack. He's only um, uh, he, he, at the age of 71. I mean, he took a nap and never, just never woke up. Okay. Um, I'm going to use two stories um, to illustrate how this man had, had made an impact on my life. Um, I've been married to Eileen for 13 years. Uh, a, year, uh, a week ago was our 13th anniversary. And in the, 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 the 13 years that we've been married, I want to share with you about one of our, not one of our, the biggest arguments and fights we ever had in those 20 years, in, in those 13 years. It was over. I'll, I'll explain to you the circumstances why we had such a huge argument, right? Now, she was pregnant with Zach, our number two. And, and I think she was ready to pop any minute. And I already scheduled Yue Zi Zhongxin, a maternity place where it's like, a, if you're not familiar with this in Taiwan, 
uh, they have this kind of a five-star, six-star hotel type of uh, happy resort for mommy where for 30 days they don't do anything. They just, uh, they just sleep and eat. And so, so you know, we're, we're scheduled to go to this happy place for mommy, right? Um, and so, but during the same time, uh, Asia for Jesus, we, we were having a youth conference and the off, office had called me and said, we got a group from down south and they're Aborigine students. Uh, they don't have a lot of, uh, they don't have a lot of money, but they're coming up to get some trainings uh, and they don't have a place to stay. How can we help them? I said, I know they can stay over my house. They can come over. I said, how many of them? She's like, it's about eight or ten of them. I come over. Now, I made a huge mistake. All married men, you got to understand something. When you make any decision concerning just about anything, anything, you need to check with the whole, not not Holy Spirit, we need to check with your wife. And, And so I didn't do that. So Eileen was furious. She came home. I told her about it. She was like, what? Why would you do that? I said, because we're going to be away. And she said, now, do you know these young people personally? I'm like, of course not. She's like, do you know the pastor who's taking them up to Taipei personally? I'm like, of course not. She said, do you know the name of the church? Do you know the church? I said, no. She's like, then why would you say yes to a group of strangers coming over to stay at your house? I said, why not? So we have this, you know, you got to understand. So I'm, I'm thinking like, come on. That's what you do. When you have a space available, you make it available to people. And she's like, what? Who are you? What are you thinking? So I'm thinking, because I'm a PK growing up in a pastor's home. So, you know, we, we stay over people's house and we feel people come over and stay over our house. That that's what we do. But I realize all this has to do with that man. Second story, which I'm just going to quickly mention. You all heard about my desire to host these pastors and take him out on a holiday. Well, even this desire was impacted by that man. To be honest with you, you know, um, I'm known in my kind of world, I, 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 like, I'm a person of generosity. Like, I'm a very generous person. I think because I am a generous person, therefore I am generous. But if I just realized over the past two weeks, I wasn't a generous person. I was a very cold person, a very stingy person. Growing up, I never wanted to share anything with anyone. Now, what had happened was when I graduated from college, I was applying to various graduate school. So one of the school I applied to, I got in, is in Nebraska. And this gentleman, this, this, this uncle, he lives in Nebraska. And he called my father. He said, hey, I heard your son got into the program in the city that I live in. Have him come to the school. He doesn't need to find a place to stay. He can crash and live with us. Now, this, I was a parachute kid, which means that I... I left Taiwan, so I lived in the States at the age of 12, so I crashed with relatives, different relatives. I live in different homes, so I figured, hey, it's another home. But I didn't realize, see, we're not related at all. Now, his only relation with my, is with my father. My father was his college counselor, church counselor, youth group counselor. And he invited me to his home. And, and here's what he did for me. So I was getting ready to go. I packed up my car. He called me up. He said, hey, Jonathan, 
don't drive your car. Just get on the flight with your luggage. I said, then how am I gonna, how am I gonna drive? He said, don't worry. I got a car prepared for you. I said, what? He said, yeah, because you know in Nebraska, we, it snows a lot. You're from California. You don't know how to drive in snow. We need to change snow tires. I got all that fixed up for you. Just come. And when I got there, it was a not even one-year-old Honda Accord. And it was the newest car they had. And he gave it to me to drive. They live in a pretty big home. So I got my own place. I got my own bed, bedrooms and, 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 and suites. So, so I was doing my thing. But here's what they did for me. Now, they, they own about eight or, eight or nine Chinese restaurants around the city. They would make breakfast for me. They would pack lunch for me. I have dinner with them every day for two entire two entire years for two years i didn't do grocery shopping see they didn't just take me in they took me in as a son they took a stranger in but they treated a stranger with such love and kindness and grace a couple of times i went to the chinese restaurants and I pay my bills in the evenings during dinner time. He came home. He gave me back the money. He says, never pay again. Next time I go to a Chinese restaurant, I realize you don't pay. But I got to tip the waiter and waitress because they work hard. So I left a tip. In the evening, dinner time, he came back. He brought back the tips. He said, don't pay. And I'm like... What's wrong with you? Because people got to work, you know, you got to pay them, you got to tip them, you know, what's wrong with you? And then I realized something this time. The reason why he didn't take any money from me, because you don't take money from your son. And when I found out that his passing away, I finally reconnect with the family and I said, I'm coming. I'm coming to the funeral. And whatever you need me to do, I'll be happy to serve. And here's that. And, and the auntie wrote me back, and here's what she wrote. She said, Jonathan, thank you so much during this hardest time of our lives that you would come back and to become our sons again. See, there was an inheritance of such generosity. There was an inheritance of of such hospitality. Not just by living with him for two years, I sat under that. I was loved in such a way, it changed who I am as a person. I was being treated in such a way, it completely changed my mindset. So obviously when I had that huge fight with Eileen, because my thinking was changed. So you have to understand that we have all sat under influence of our forefathers. And instead of thinking about generational curses, I want, to begin, I want you to begin to think about generational blessings. There are tremendous blessings. And it is a year that you rise up and lay hold of that. And he said, God, I thank you. And I received that by faith. Another thing about this portion of scripture is it says your descendant will dispossess nation. It's talking about, see, you, you, when you build legacy, you know, sometimes we don't build legacy. It's because we don't think from generation to generation. We think only one generation. We think, when we talk about visions, we always talk about vision concerning me. Like here's what God has called me to do. You have to have a vision that is bigger than just you. You have to have a vision that's bigger than just one generation. Otherwise, you only think about you. And it's talking about your descendants. 
See, something is going to going to come to pass, but not in your generation. You're going to lay the groundwork, just like your forefathers laid the groundwork before you. And you come into that inheritance, and now it's your turn to lay the groundwork. Because what God is intending to do in this land is not going to be accomplished in one generation. So I have an important job to not just to do what I want to do, but I need to lay the, the groundwork for the next generation to follow and the generation after. And let me tell you something, building a legacy is always intentional. Discipleship is always intentional. Whatever you're doing right now, God is calling you to make disciples. Not just in church, not just in ministry. Whatever you do in the marketplace, you need to find ways to multiply you. Because it's going to take more than you to dispossess nations. Oh, I forgot to mention to you about another part of legacy uh, that we are all under a part of. 35 years ago, Bread of Life Church was one single local church. We were doing church the way we knew how to. We thought by building just one church and doing church well, that was our mandate. And 35 years ago, a pastor who's not a stranger to this ministry, his name is Ross Patterson. He wrote a letter to my father. My father was a senior pastor at the time. He wrote a letter to my father. And in that letter, the scripture that he quoted is Isaiah 54, verses 1 through 4, which is the passage that we just read today, which is the passage that the Lord has given us last year and this year. Now, with this passage, he's encouraging my father to begin to strengthen the core, strengthening the stakes, begin to spread out to the left and spread out to the right. Back then... There was only one bread of life in Taipei. He begins to challenge my father, begins to challenge the church. He says, unless you begin to spread out, you begin to plant churches around, we won't be able to dispossess nations. All the desolate cities will remain desolate. So from 35 years ago, we begin to church plan all over Taiwan. Right now we have over 70 or 80 bread of lives in Taiwan. And worldwide, we have close to 500 bread of life churches in 40 different nations. They all started with this portion of scripture. And I'm telling you. See, God is reminding us of that legacy that we were, one, we were part of. But there is a legacy that we have to leave behind. And I feel like God is calling us to expand, to build, to plant. If you go to Mongolia, the largest church in Mongolia is a bread of life. If you go to West Africa, there's a ton of Bread of Life churches in West Africa. And they don't look Chinese at all. And they don't, certainly don't speak Chinese. But that's what God is doing. And I really believe that God is calling us to not just win souls, but to literally transform this city and this nation. And 
we want to usher in that transformation. And every single one of us is an agent of such transformation in this city. I don't know about you, but I'm super excited about 2018 of what God, you know, looking back 2017, I'm just, I'm so thankful. But I feel like accelerated speed is coming. Are you ready for that? I feel like an expansion is coming. And I feel like there's an inheritance that is coming upon all of our lives. And with that comes responsibility. With that comes stewardship. With that, you need to store it well with wisdom. And that's why the Kingdom Culture Conference, the theme is called Reign in Life. Because we, we have to learn how to store the inheritance that God has given us. Because if you don't store well, you'll squander it in one generation. We see a lot of second generation of rich and affluent. They don't know the purpose of such. So they live for themselves. But if you begin to understand. See, that inheritance you didn't work for, but somebody else paid a price for it. You don't need to pay a price to receive that inheritance, but you will need to pay a price if you want to build a legacy, if you want to increase that inheritance for the generation after. You will have to work. And that's why we're here. And that's why we're here. We thank God for the inheritance that our forefathers have laid. But we're not here just to spend it. We're here to grow it, increase it, multiply it. Because I have a dream that one day my children, my children's children, they will see a nation transform with the glory of God. Can we stand? I'm just, going to pray a I'm just going to pray a corporate prayer, but I feel like there is an anointing that's, that, is, that God wants to release, not just in Bread of Life International, but just all over Bread of Life Church. So I want you to just stretch out your hands to receive it. Do you believe it's going to be an amazing year? Father God, we come before you. We thank you. We thank you for your word for 2018. And we just want to position ourselves to walk with you, to journey with you. Lord, we just want to position ourselves to say yes and amen to everything that you have called us into, to all the doors that you have opened for us to all the challenges that you have laid before us. Our response is a corporate yes. Our response is a corporate amen. Lord, we want everything you have in store for us. Be it personally, be it in our family, be it in our ministry, in our church, in our city, in our nation, Lord. Lord, we say, we are here ready to be sent out. So we thank you for your grace. Holy Spirit, release the anointing for 2018. Lord, release the grace upon each and every one of us. We thank you. We love you. And we pray in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. 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 For those of you who want to just respond to the message today, you can come to the front. We would love to pray.